talk a little bit about the importance of communication skills in Canada. Um, the Canadian Language Benchmarks, which is the system that describes uh, language skills in, um, in Canada. We will talk about WellArc, and you already know what WellArc stands for, right? Do you remember? What was it? Winnipeg, English Language Assessment and <laughs> Referral Center. Good. Yay. Um, we will talk uh, more about the benchmark test and EAL classes and also some other adult learning opportunities that are available in Winnipeg. Okay. So first of all, what are communication skills? What is that? Well, skills which, uh, which will help you to communicate or, or to uh, convey your ideas or thoughts. It's very good. Convey your ideas, right? Now, how many of you are looking for work right now? Uh, most of you, okay. And how many of you have read multiple uh, job ads that ask for excellent communication skills? How many times have you seen that phrase? most of the time, right? So communication skills are exactly what you said. It's how you present your ideas in speech or in writing. It's how you listen to others, how you understand the message you receive. And it's also how you can adapt your um, speaking style depending on who you're talking to, right? We talk differently to our bosses and we talk differently to our children, right? So if you can distinguish that in English, for example, that could suggest that your skills are pretty good, okay? Now, English classes in Canada are, help, uh, are designed to help you improve your communication skills, okay? And communication skills are really important, and those excellent communication skills, especially when uh, you're looking for work or when you're looking for educational opportunities. The more um, communication skills you have, the more opportunities you're going to have as well, okay? Um, communication skills are also important to, to live in Canada and be part of the community and to be able to live here independently so you don't have to rely on, on anybody else, okay? And like I said, more English equals more opportunities, okay? So how do you improve your communication skills? What do you have to do? Read more. Read more. Oh, I love that word. Practice. Practice. Can you say that again? Practice. And again? Practice. Yes. And see, you can read my mind. Practice, practice, practice. This is how you're going to improve your communication skills. Uh, going to classes will help you as well because you will be able to learn new skills. Okay. Uh, then, of course, you need to review and practice what you have learned and, and use it whenever you're using the language. So when you're reading books, when you're using the internet, uh, when you're reading newspapers, when you're listening to what other people are saying on the bus, okay? Um, use English whenever you can, wherever you can, okay? And unfortunately, the bad news is that learning a language always takes time. Okay, my foreign languages are getting pretty good, especially the English part of them. Okay, um, so the way we measure communication skills in Canada, and this system is used widely across Canada, is called the Canadian Language Benchmarks. Okay, the benchmarks describe what you can do in English. Okay, and they describe your skills in the four skill areas. So you get a number, a skill for listening, for speaking, for reading, and for writing. Okay. So here is the online self-assessment. Um, the website is clb-osa.ca and you don't have to write it down, I will give it to you on the handout. Um, so you can go to this website, you, can, you will have to register and you can take a kind of like a practice test in English or in French, and uh, only in two skills. You, so you can do it in listening or in reading, okay, or both. Um, the result you're going to get is actually going to be a range of levels, so you can get like five, six, seven. Um, and this, of course, cannot be used officially, it's just practice, okay? 
Um, and still more information about Canadian language benchmarks can be found uh, on the Center for Canadian Language Benchmarks website at language.ca. Okay. And you can read it in English or in French. So um, when you came to, uh, to Winnipeg, to uh, Manitoba, the first point of contact you made was really Manitoba Start, right? Have all of you been to Manitoba Start? Yeah. Um, and at Manitoba Start, you received a lot of information about different services available in the city, and also you were registered for entry program, right? So now you are at entry program, and you're learning even more. And um, the next stage is when you finish entry program, um, entry will make an appointment for you to, um, to come to us, to WellArc, and have your language skills assessed, okay? So that's kind of the flow of, that everybody goes through. So how can WellArc help? Do you know this building? Yeah, so that's where we are. Manitoba Start is right here, and entry didn't, uh, entry didn't fit in the picture, I guess. Um, but the, we're on the same block. We are also on the fourth floor, OK? And at WellArc, we will help you make a plan to improve your English. So uh, we will talk to you about your goals and your needs, okay? And uh, we will assess your English. We will talk to you about the results of your assessment. And we will let you know how the skills you have uh, relate to your goals, okay? And then we will help you make a plan to maybe improve your skills to, so that you can reach your goals. But before you visit WellArc, think about how much language you're going to need in order to be able to, let's say, have the career you're dreaming about, okay, or pursue education you want to pursue. Also think about uh, your family, your health, your work, um, where you live, because all those um, kind of factor in when we help you make the decision about the best school for you, okay? Um, so when you finish entry, uh, you're going to receive an appointment slip, and there's one here, and there is one here. Uh, this will have information, it'll have your name and last name, it'll have the time and date of your appointment, and it also reminds you about, reminds you about the documents you need to bring for, um, for the test. Um, it also has our phone number, in case you can't come, okay? Um, it is important to remember that you will have to probably arrange a few things before your uh, appointment at WellArc. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a way to take care of children while parents are doing the test. So if you have little children at home, you will have to arrange for somebody to, to look after your children um, while you're taking the test. The appointment can take up to three hours and there's really no room or place where, where your children could be safe and you won't be able to look after them while you're writing the test. Um, also bring a water, of, uh, water bottle or maybe even a light snack. Like I said, it's up to three hours, so you might get hungry. You can order pizza for the whole office, so that's okay. Um, and if you can't come, please call us or to, to let us know that you won't be coming so that we can maybe fill the space with somebody else who's waiting for an appointment. And then so you don't have to wait to have another appointment, okay? So here are the documents you have to bring so that we can provide services to you, okay? Um, how many of you have permanent residence card already? Okay, some of you. If you don't have your permanent resident card, I am sure that when you landed in Canada, did everybody come by plane? Okay, good. Um, so when you were at the airport and you met with uh, immigration, you received this big white piece of paper with a lot of information. And that uh, document is called confirmation of permanent residence. So if you don't have your permanent resident card yet, then you can just bring that document, okay? The other piece of ID that we are going to require is your Manitoba health card. And here it is. So you all have that, right? Yes. Okay, good. And um, we will need your Manitoba health card just to verify your address, okay? But um, the immigration documents are the most important, really. So if you forget your documents 
uh, we will not be able to provide services to you on that day, but we will reschedule your appointment and we'll just invite you to come at another time and date when it's convenient to you and then serve you. Now, I know that some of you have taken IELTS, right? Um, if you have an IELTS test, we may be able to refer you to English classes without doing the Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test. And there are some options, some schools that do uh, accept clients with IELTS results, okay? Same if you have TOEFL. So right now, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a virtual tour of Wellark. So uh, like I said, Wellark is on the fourth floor, and uh, there's always just one door that is open on our floor. And usually people go to all the doors that are closed first and kind of peek to the open door. But you can come straight in. So come right in. Um, you will see our uh, lovely admin staff um, at the front desk. And they will ask to see your documents. They will verify that the documents are correct. They will give the documents back to you and just ask you to have a seat and to also turn off your cell phone, OK? Uh, when you sit down, you might have to wait for a couple of minutes. And uh, you will be approached by an assessor. And the assessor will ask you a couple of questions, like when you came to Canada, if you had another test, what are your goals, basically, and then um, decide whether you need a test and then start your test, OK? So you may be starting the test with uh, reading or writing or listening and speaking. Um, the reading and writing tests are done in our reading and writing room. Uh, we also call it the invigilating room. Um, in this room, you actually cannot use any electronics. Okay, uh, and you cannot bring a dictionary, okay, which is good for your back because dictionaries are heavy. Um, but the only things you really can use are, are your, your mind and your hand, okay. Um, we provide pencils and uh, erasers so you don't have to bring any writing materials either, and you will be writing on the test on the paper that we will also provide to you, okay. Um, the listening and speaking tests are done in an assessor's office and they're done together and they're done one on one. So there's nobody watching, okay? It's just you and the assessor and it's just a conversation, okay? So it starts at simpler questions and then it becomes more and more difficult, okay? Um, also planning and the referral process take place in the same office, okay? So who are the assessors? So all of the assessors are actually learners. All of us have been learning foreign languages or are still learning. So be careful what you say in the office because we might understand, OK? Um, but we understand what kind of obstacles and constraints you guys will be facing as well, OK? All of us uh, are also teachers. So we have all taught uh, English or French or some other subjects. So we, so we get the perspective of the teacher and the student. And we are all certified assessors. So in order to, to become an assessor, uh, you need to have um, a certain amount of experience teaching English, um, and you need to go through training. So all of us have done that, and all of us are certified assessors of uh, the Canadian Language Benchmarks Placement Test. And our job is to basically assess your language skills, give you feedback on that, and give you a referral to school. So um, like I said, the test we use at Wellark is called the Canadian Language Benchmarks Placement Test. And the only purpose of this test is to place you in an appropriate level English language class. Okay? Um, the test is not used for education. So if you're planning on pursuing post-secondary education, um, the CLBPT does not describe um, whether or not you are ready to be successful in an academic setting. Okay? So universities and colleges really do not accept the benchmark test. Okay? Uh, you also cannot use the Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test results for employment. Okay? 
Uh, when you're applying for a job and you're talking to the employer, your employer uh, has to give you an interview in order to determine whether your language skills are good enough to do a particular job that you're applying for. Um, employers usually do not know what the Canadian language benchmarks are and they can't read them so you know they might decide oh I like benchmark number one or I might like benchmark number five so usually they're they just are not very familiar with the system okay so that's why we tell you don't use it also you cannot use the Canadian language benchmarks placement test results for citizenship application so in a few years, when you decide you want to apply for Canadian citizenship, you will need to provide a proof of language proficiency in English. Okay? Uh, the list of the tests that are acceptable and other documents that are acceptable is on the CIC website, Cana uh, Citizenship and Immigration Canada website. Uh, and Canadian Language Benchmarks Placement Test is not one of those. Okay? So again, how long is the appointment? I told you it can take up to three hours, right? But let's just recap um, what you're going to do within those three hours. So you're going to get 30 minutes for reading, okay? And you're going to get 30 minutes for writing as well. Uh, the listening and speaking test has no time limit, but usually takes between 10 and 30 minutes, okay? Now, when you're done with all your tests, uh, and you can be doing those tests in different order, um, you will probably have to wait for a while for the assessor to check your tests, put in the comments in the database. Um, so you'll be waiting for a little bit, and you will be seeing all your friends from entry at that time. And then the assessor will call you back into the office for a referral. And during that time, the assessor will tell you about your levels. They will also tell you about your strengths and your weaknesses, and also discuss how your levels relate to your goals in Canada. Okay, sounds good. Any questions? Um, so like I said, the referral process will take place in the assessor's office, and it is usually one-on-one. -on -one. However, if you have family members that are taking the test at the same time, um, you can have the referral done at the same time as well with your family member, okay? But not the listening and speaking test. So the free EAL classes in Winnipeg are free. So how much do you have to pay? Huh? Nothing? Are you sure? Three dollars for a copy, okay. No, you actually don't have to pay anything. They are free. And there are a lot of choices when it comes to different options. So there are part-time classes available. Uh, those take place during the day, either in the mornings or in the afternoons. They, the class is usually two or three hours long, and they can be any time between twice to four, four or five times a week. Okay. There are also evening classes available for those who are maybe working during the day or have other engagements. Um, evening classes take place between two to four times a week. There are full-time classes, so if you have a lot of time on your hand and you really want to focus on improving your language, then that might be a good choice. Uh, full-time classes are about five, six hours a day, every day, Monday to Friday. Weekends are free but we can fill your weekends otherwise, okay? There are also some specialized programs. So um, if you are in one of the mm, professions like engineers, teachers, accountants, agrologists, nurses, and I think doctors as well, business or IT, if you're in um, one of those professions, there are English classes specifically designed for those professions where you can learn English in the context of accounting, engineering, nursing, etc. Okay? And those programs can be full-time, they can be in the evenings, it really depends on the program. There are also volunteer programs available. Um, those programs are usually for um, the elder members of the community. So if you have um, elderly family members who, who don't really get a chance to get out of the house, they're not really looking for work, but would like to do something, there are English classes for them where, you can, where they can meet people with similar needs, okay? And make some friends. 
There are also neighborhood EAL classes available. Also, different schedules are available in this group, so you can take morning, afternoon, or evening classes. A lot of uh, those classes also offer childcare. So if you have little children and you don't have um, childcare yet, uh, then you may have a chance to go to school with your child or children, and then the children play in one room with other children, and the mothers or fathers learn together in a separate room. And like I said, to fill up your weekends when you're not in class, uh, there are also online programs available. There's basically just one right now. It's um, English Online. And uh, at English Online, really, you can study whenever. So if you feel like only studying at 3 AM in the morning, you can study with English Online. Um, if you have to travel outside of Canada or outside of the city, then you still will be able to access English Online. At the end of your appointment at WellArc, uh, you're going to receive what we call an adult EAL referral form. Okay? Um, this form has information about you, so like your contact information, what languages you speak. Um, it has information about your scores on the test and listening, speaking, reading, and writing. There is no average. Um, and it also has comments about your English for you to also read through and maybe look at it a few years from then and see, oh, I couldn't do this then. Oh, now I can. Um, and also the schools you're going to be referred to will be listed here. And all the information you need to know to start language classes will be described in the comments. OK? So how do you learn English in Canada? Learning English in Canada is quite different from what you might be used to from your country. Um, first of all, there is no textbook. Have you ever studied a language without a textbook? No? Well, now you have a chance. Okay. So there is no textbook. The teachers usually design their own materials okay, that follow the class curriculum. And, um, and a lot of the materials that teachers prepare are taken from real life language. Okay. Um, the classes are not just about grammar and vocabulary. So um, you won't have to be able to recite the definition of present perfect and its applications when you finish classes in order to pass, okay? which is great. It is great. Um, you will be learning grammar and vocabulary designed for a particular task so that you can then take what you've learned in class, go into real life, and, and apply what you have learned. Okay? And also learners and teachers are partners in learning. Okay? So um, a lot of time you will be able to not only learn from your teacher, but also teach your teacher something new about your culture. Now what happens if your situation changes? So let's say you come to WellArc, you have your appointment, you are referred to English classes, you're ready to start, and then this wonderful job opportunity comes in and you just have to say yes, and, but you can't take the classes that you are planning on taking. In a situation like that, when, you're, when your situation changes, uh, what you can do is you can always come back to WellArc, you can contact us and say, I can't go to the classes I was planning to go to. Can I come in and talk about other options? And we will, we will help you make an appointment for a referral. So probably you won't need a new assessment. Okay? Um, the referral appointments are about 20, 30 minutes. We'll talk about your new situation. We'll uh, give you the, um, the new options for, for language learning. And you'll be able to, to decide what you, how you can change your plan. Okay? Um, right now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the other, other adult um, education opportunities available in, in Manitoba. Um, so adult EAL is kind of very separate from other adult learning opportunities. I will talk to you about um, high schools and post-secondary education. However, I, I have to note um, at the beginning that even though in all these um, schools you would be learning in English, you're not going to be able to improve your language skills much. Okay? You will be using English, but you're not going to be learning new skills. Okay? For that, you need to go to English language classes. 
Um, so here's some information that may be useful uh, for you. So if some of you were not able to finish high school in your own country, and you happen to be under 21 years of age, and you have fairly strong communication skills in English, then you can go back to regular high school. And you can just walk in there and say, hi, I want to finish high school. Okay. Um, so, like I said, you have to be under 21 years of age. Um, high school in uh, Manitoba is free, so you don't have to pay anything, right? I'm serious this time. Um, for people who are over the age of 18 and were not able to finish um, high school in their country, uh, there are also adult learning centers. And in adult learning centers, a person can get their uh, what's called mature student diploma. So it's like a high school diploma. Um, but you can also go there to review or upgrade your skills. So let's say you finished high school 20 years ago, and now you want to go back to university and study medicine, right? But it's been a long time since you studied biology or chemistry or, or physics, and you need to review or upgrade those skills, you can go to an adult learning centers and take classes in the subjects. Okay. Again, for adult learning centers, you will need uh, quite high um, communication skills, just so you can be successful in the, in the academic environment. And their services are also free. We also have adult literacy centers. Um, those places are um, designed for people who maybe do not have a lot of experience in reading or writing or numeracy or computer skills. So in those, um, in those places, uh, a person can go and improve their, just their reading skill or uh, their math skills and, and similar areas. Um, for, in order to participate in adult literacy centers programming, you need to have about conversational level of language. And they're also free. Next option is not free. So college and university, how many of you are thinking about returning to college or taking post-secondary education? Okay, quite a few. Um, when it comes to college and university, um, my first advice to you would be to contact them, contact the student advisor, and speak directly to them about the requirements that you will have to fulfill. Okay? Um, colleges and universities uh, will require a proof of language proficiency, and uh, they, have, um, they have a list of tests or programs that they approve as proof of language proficiency. So they will accept IELTS, they will accept TOEFL test, um, CAN test, MELAB, um, a certificate from APUS program. Um, but like I said, you will always need to speak directly to the college and university and they will tell you exactly what test you should take and what levels will be required. Because it may differ between department and department even within the same organization. Okay. Um, college and university in Canada are not free, but there is funding available for, class, uh, for um, the, this kind of programming. And uh, the funding might be uh, Manitoba Student Aid. Uh, this is a governmental initiative, and um, you will have the link to the website on uh, the handout I'm going to give you. There's also Seed Winnipeg and PIP program. So you will be able to ask your assessor in more detail about uh, these programs. So you can always go back to Manitoba Start and also inquire. They should be able to give you that information as well. Um, so now we'll tell you a little bit more about other settlement services that are available in Winnipeg. Okay, these services will help you just adjust to your life in, to new, your new life in Canada. Okay, there's Manitoba Start where everybody has gone. Right? If you haven't been to Manitoba, start right run now. Um, and they provide services and employment, so I'm guessing a lot of you will be taking employment workshops or are taking them right now. Yes? Um, they can give you information about other settlement services available in the city or even in your area. Um, give you information about different governmental initiatives that uh, you can take advantage of um, when it comes to um, 
professional opportunities or even educational opportunities. Um, another great initiative is the Neighborhood Immigrant Settlement Workers Program. Um, this is a group of people that works in various areas of the city and they assist newcomers with any settlement challenges. So they can help you, for example, find a doctor who's going to speak your language or help you find school for your child or help you find a lawyer when you're buying a house and, and similar things. Um, they also organize a, lo a lot of local programming. So I know, for example, in Seven Oaks, there was and maybe still is a woodworking program for men only, however. Um, so in order to find your neighborhood immigrant settlement worker, you can call this number. And there are a lot of them in, in different areas. So if you see your area here, then you know for sure they're there. And if you don't see your area here, then I assure you they're there as well. Okay. Then there's Welcome Place. Um, Welcome Place assists refugees in adjusting to life in Canada. Okay. If you are a government-sponsored refugee, you will have made contact, uh, you would have already made contact with Welcome Place. If you are a privately sponsored refugee, you can also go to Welcome Place and seek different services there as well. Okay. And they are at 521 Bannatyne Avenue. It's a nice white building. Uh, there's also Immigrant Center. Have you guys heard about Immigrant Center? Yes. Immigrant Center provides lots and lots of various services. Um, they have conversation circles where you can practice listening and speaking. Uh, they have uh, citizenship classes. So when you are going to be getting ready to take citizenship test, you can go there and learn more and review your information. Uh, they have computer classes, employment services, and also translation services. So, for example, if you have documents from your home country that need to be translated into English or French, they, can, uh, they might be able to help you with that. Okay. And they are at 100 Adelaide Street. Uh, there's also Seed Winnipeg, and um, Seed Winnipeg is at 80 Salter Street. Um, their goal is to basically reduce poverty and educate people about money management. They have some wonderful programs there. Um, they can help you start a small business. They provide um, loans for um, credential recognition process as well. Um, and they also have a program called Saving Circle where you save money and they can even match your sa savings. So if you save, let's say, $200, they will match it and give you another $200. Okay. Uh, for those of you who speak French, do we have any French speakers? No? Okay. Okay, one. Okay, I'm the French speaker. Um, there's a case francophone where you can access services in French. Okay. And here is the best website in the world. Um, yes, it's uh, wellart.net. So a lot of the information that I have just given you, you will be able to also find on this website. And uh, you are also going to be able to find pictures of assessors, but I'm not going to tell you where they are on the website. Um, and there's also a video of a client experience in, in WellArc as well. There's a link to YouTube there. Um, for more information about immigration in Manitoba, different opportunities and guides and basically how to live in um, our beautiful province, you can go to immigratemanitoba.com and find a lot of interesting information. Okay. And here's the website of our funder, Citizenship and Immigration Canada. So if you have any questions relating to your status or uh, maybe inviting family to come visa processes, any of that uh, sort of information, you might be able to find it on this website. Okay. Now, do you have any questions for me? No, I have one. Okay. Which program will help, help us in improving the resume that we have uh, mm -hmm. for international? Okay. So the question is, which program will help us improve resume writing? Um, there are classes that are designed to help you improve writing. 
and part of them might be focused on resume writing. But I think when you're going to be taking employment workshops at Manitoba Start, you will also be uh, um, receiving information about information to include, information not to include on, on your resume. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Now I might have some questions for you. What if I take the test and I get a low mark? So can I do the test again? What's the answer to that? No, no. Um, this test, like I said, it's, it's really not a test. It's like an assessment of your skills. Um, and it is valid within one benchmark, OK? Um, in order to improve your language skills, you can't really take a new test, OK? Because then you're just improving your test taking skills. You actually need to go to English classes, learn more skills, OK? And then when you, when you are in English classes, at the end, like I said, you may be receiving a report from your teacher with specific new benchmarks, OK? Do I have to take the Canadian language benchmark placement test? Is it required? No, it's not required. It's only required when you want to access uh, English as additional language classes. Okay, this is for us to place you in language classes. Are the classes free? Yes. 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 So how much do you have to pay? <laughs> Nothing. Good. And um, do I need a Canadian language benchmark to take an academic course? No. Like I said, you need to go and talk to college and university and find out exactly what they want you to have. Okay? Any other questions? You passed my test. But that wasn't the benchmark test. So welcome to Winnipeg, welcome to Manitoba, and welcome to Canada.